sorry about your dead human friend, Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> that is good shit. Well, fuck me. Maybe. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that you tuned into this video because you wanted my opinion of the movie and I'm more than happy to give it to you as long as you don't ask me to pull out my wiener. My name is Brandon Keith Avery and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the Happy Time Murders. I really do appreciate it. Now, I remember this film not being on my radar at all, but the trailer came out and I reacted to it and I thought it was freaking hilarious. I thought this was possibly going to be one of the funniest movies of the year. Possibly could be one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. And you're probably like, whoa, are you talking about some puppets and it's real crude and raunchy and things like that? I mean, that's just the type of person that I am. That's just my personality. I like silly things. I like spoofs. I like over the top crazy over exaggerated entertainment i mean that's just like what i'm into and when i'm talking about this review right here for this film i'm going to bring up some other films um that i do find fascinating i'm not pretty sure if they still hold up today because i saw a number of them 10 years ago and 20 years ago uh but we're going to have a discussion about that now, if it wasn't obvious to you already, this film kind of tailors around the Muppets and Sesame Street from back in the 60s and 70s and things like that. Um, the director of the film is actually Brian Henson. He is the son of Jim Henson. If, if you know Jim Henson, he is behind the Muppet Show and Sesame Street and all that good stuff. And just actually just a little tidbit behind the scenes. Uh, the film, the uh, pr the uh, production company for this film was actually sued uh, by the uh, Muppet Company because they didn't like the tagline like "No Sesame, No Street." They thought that that was like putting a shadow over the brand and just making them look bad. But you know, it got dismissed. They didn't win. But I just kind of thought that was interesting. Didn't really see that it was uh, necessary. But as far as this film, The Happy Time Murders, you know, I was, you know, I don't want to just say I was just super duper excited about it. I was when the trailer first came out but you know when it was coming up to go see the film you know i was trying to keep my expectations in check i didn't check out any reviews i just wanted to go in with an open mind and you know an open heart and i just really did want to enjoy it and um, you know for the most part i did i mean there i mean this is a comedy to me and i was laughing throughout a majority of this movie especially at the very beginning um you know there were a lot of laugh out loud moments and then just other moments throughout the film sprinkled in and there that I just kind of just chuckled here and there and just didn't think it was funny as the rest but still got some type of uh, entertainment out of it this is kind of a mix between puppets and live action characters uh, mainly between Melissa McCarthy I am a big fan of hers I have not seen all of her films uh, but for the most part she is uh, very funny to me if she is attached to a film that is one of the reasons why I would go see it but I cannot say that to my, you know for this particular film here how she did in this film is she's not as funny as she was in all of her other films and some films that you know I, I can get a little sick of it you know uh, she is a larger woman and in a lot of her films as of late I've noticed that she kind of makes fun of herself uh, about being large and she's always you know falling down or getting beat up or just bumbling over herself fumbling over herself and that can be funny to, um, you know that can only be funny for so long uh, before it gets exhausting and tired it's like okay please bring me some more material some more uh, type of entertainment but I'm proud to say and I'm glad to say that that's not really the case here uh, you know Melissa McCarthy's performance and her personality in this film was toned back a whole ton uh, from what I've seen with her in the past now I'm not saying that she stood out great in this film and you know you need to go see this film because of her so while I did enjoy Melissa McCarthy's performance not saying that it's great you know at the same time it wasn't the selling point of this film now uh, this next character I'm going to talk about isn't the selling point either but in my opinion he is the character that saves the film and that is Bill Beretta I am not too familiar with him but he is the uh, the voice actor uh, that voice the puppet in this film by the name of Phil who is an ex-cop and now a detective 
for this movie this movie is over the top it's extremely raunchy and silly it is not anything to take seriously but this is the only character in this film that i actually did take seriously and if it wasn't for uh this actual puppet's involvement this film would have been like an epic failure to me um he is the only person that i actually really cared about um, and I really didn't care about him much. He just, I really liked him the most out of everybody. There were, you know, he was very serious, you know, down on his luck. Um, you know, just kind of really counting the days that, you know, until he died or he got blown away or something like that. Um, but you know, he saved the film for me. I mean, you know, everybody else I couldn't take seriously. I know I just talked about Melissa McCarthy. Um, there's another gentleman in this film as well. Uh, by the name of he's a, a black dude Leslie David Baker uh, he played a character by the name of Lieutenant Banning and it was just a joke to me as soon as he came on screen for the first time his acting was just trash he's been in a lot of TV I hate to say that you know uh, about a brother especially but I just didn't enjoy it I mean I'm just like you know man you know where did the money go when they uh, well they know apparently they didn't have any the budget was 10 million dollars and they didn't go to the cast uh, you know casting red actors it went to another part of the film, which I'm going to talk about later. But, you know, Melissa McCarthy, she was OK. Uh, this gentleman here, Leslie David Baker, I was not a fan of his at all. And then the puppet played by Bill Beretta. You know, that's the thing that saved me from the film. Now, what this film is about is that you have this happy time gang of puppets that were really popular back in the day in the 80s. But someone now is going around executing all the puppets, just killing them one by one by one. And Melissa McCarthy. McCarthy and Bill Beretta or the character Phil they're trying to investigate and get to the bottom of this mystery and seeing who is going around and murdering everybody so you have a a buddy cop movie a live action person with Melissa McCarthy and then you also have the puppet but just speaking more about the puppets that is something that I really did like about the film I'm kind of going back and forth with my likes and dislikes um, you know, they wasn't just really stagnant. I mean, they had a nice flow of motion to them. I have I'm not too I haven't seen every puppet movie that has came came out in film history. Um, but you know, notice you will notice that most of the time you can only see half of their body because you know they're not a real person, it's a puppet and they have a hand up their body with someone moving around. But when this film here, you actually get full body shots of puppets moving around and walking and jumping up and down and stomping and kicking their feet. And it's just something that I've never seen before. It stood out to me. And I, when I saw it, I, it was a highlight. I was like, oh, okay. I like how they did that. I have no idea how they did it. Uh, but I like it. And it's something that I've never seen before. If you do decide to see the film, make sure you stay to, for the outtakes. Because that is pretty much the funniest part of the film to me. And then they also do kind of showcase and illustrate to you how they were able to do all the behind the scenes mechanics. With, you know, showing the puppets moving around with CGI elements here and there. And it was quite fascinating to me. And, um, you know, I kind of understand that's where a uh, majority of the of the budget went. Me as a black man, you know, growing up in America, of course, we know that we deal with racism and discrimination all the time. We deal with it today. We did, we've we dealt with it since the very beginning of this country or whatever. And in this film, the puppets are second class citizens and they do uh, deal with, uh, you know, racism. Well, not racism. They're, they're, it's not there. I mean, you, you get what I'm trying to say. They're discriminated against. You know, there is a strong prejudice in this movie. And especially in the very beginning of the film, I'm like, wow, is this really, you know, what the whole film is going to be about? And they kind of tailor it out later. But that's just kind of something that I kind of noticed. And I like how they infused that in, you know, with the real world of how, you know, real life people, how they treat puppets and things like that. You know, um, that's something else that I like. But um, the two things that um, are, I, I guess they're just my my biggest complaints is I am not a sensitive person when it comes to crude jokes and things like that, sexual material, raw material, and things like that. But in this film here, it was just a little bit too much for me to where I was just like, okay, this is just freaking ridiculous. You know, um, they went overboard. I mean, they actually have a scene in this movie, and it may have even be in the trailers. I didn't watch all the trailers. Well, they have an octopus having sex with a cow. And then, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, you know, just think about that image just for a second. An octopus having sex with a cow. And it's possibly one of the most uh, disgusting sex scenes that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'll go ahead and be honest with you. You know, um, 20, 20, 20, 25 years ago, whatever, when I was going through puberty, 
try to find out this and that you know i used to pull up some porn videos here and there and i was curious like you know hey where does this go and where does this go and uh, and different combinations and things like that you know i even saw a few videos of you know a woman having sex with a horse just because i was curious i mean you know at that age where you know you in junior high going to high school or i don't know whenever you peaked and stuff like that you know you i don't know about your curiosity but i was curious I and mean, then you you see you hearing and you seeing stuff and people talking about School. hey man you see the girl you know smash the horse and that's just crazy like what uh, before you see it for the first time okay a woman did not actually f a horse that's, that's, that's crazy but some of you out there y'all know what i'm talking about don't act like you better than me y'all seen a number of those videos of beastie out and it's like wow you'll probably never watch it again but you at least watched it at one point in time you know because you was curious you know what i'm saying i mean and it, it's just it's just disgusting this in this movie was even more disgusting than that and it was puppets i mean like and it wasn't just like a little two or three second shot or whatever they like over four widescreen yeah get it all just ah you know just everywhere and i'm going like this i only have two arms so imagine an octopus with eight arms just, just i was just like whoa and this was just like at the very beginning of the film and that was just like a little too much for me now there is another scene that's in the trailers to where uh one of the field the the main puppet here he's having sex with somebody in his office and um you know i mean if you don't know what i'm talking about here you go right here and when I reacted to it in the trailer, I was laughing in the trailer as I'm laughing now. And the only reason I'm laughing now is because uh, I'm just I'm just really thinking about it. But when I reacted to it in the trailer, it was funny. But when I saw it in the theater, I was like, there is just absolutely no context to this at all. There is no reason at all in the story that, or it has to do with Phil, the puppet's character, to why he would need to ejaculate that much and i just really didn't laugh at that point in the film i was just kind of like okay this is just kind of dumb you know but i don't know i mean because i don't know if, if just because i'm more mature now or because um uh, they just did a bad job of executing it in the film because one of the funniest movies to me guys is uh team america world police got that right there on dvd i think this film came out and i think in like 2004 oh durka 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 if you've seen the film you know what i'm talking about i haven't watched that film in a, at least five or six years i wonder if it'll still hold up but i, I just remember at times where i was just like laughing my butt off or i remember when i was in high school uh 14 or 15 years old scary movie came out i think it was like 98 99 and you know the scene to where uh they're having sex at the end and the guy ejaculates his girlfriend into this he ejaculates cindy into the ceiling is it bobby Whose is it, Bobby? It's yours. <laughs> oh! I know you may find it disgusting, but when I saw that in the theaters when I was in high school, I laughed my ass off. I, that is literally in the top five best film experiences I've had in my entire life. I was literally on the floor in the theater laughing so hard, like at, at that scene that I just that that I just showed you. Now, I mean, that's just how I am. I'm, I, I find things like that funny. Now, I don't know if I would still find that funny today or if I just found it funny 20 years ago because I was a teenager and I'm, I'm more mature now. But, you know, I think it really has to do with execution because I'm pretty confident that that material in Scary Movie or Team America, World Police is still funny to me. But in this film here, it, there was just no context for the most part to this the ridiculous over the top crude sex jokes and things like that i mean it just i kind of feel like as they was writing the script okay we just want to be nasty to be nasty we're just going to put the nasty scenes in here for no matter what and it did not work for me in this film and one of the reasons why that was funny and scary movie is he had it, it, even though it was a spoof comedy in that film he had a reason to why he ejaculated so much it was over exaggerated but it was part of his character it was part of the story 
she wasn't giving him sex the whole movie. He was pretty much a virgin, so he had a lot built up. So that was a plot point that actually made sense for him to ejaculate her into the ceiling. There was no plot or anything or character development or anything for him to just spray down his old office. So that's just why I didn't enjoy it so much. And it's funny, because of all the crude things, this film was in development for like over 10 years, you know, and it just wouldn't get approved. But, you know, they finally got the financing. So, and all, uh, and, and, and really you know when they're trying to find out the mystery of who murdered all the the puppets and things like that you know i was fascinated with the effects of puppets dying and you know their heads getting blown off and puppet cotton is flying everywhere you know i thought that was cool too especially with you know the mechanics of them uh moving the puppets around but um i you know in the end about 45 minutes into this movie i just did not care about the story there was just really no characters that i cared about that i wanted to see succeed i didn't care if the mystery was solved or not and it is solved and you know that's fine there but uh um, you know the film is only about an hour and 25 minutes long and i was ready to go um i was just really ready to leave about an hour into it i'm not saying that the film is horrible i mean i did enjoy it but it's not anything that i can recommend men to say that you have to just go rush out and see but this is something that easily that you can rent or if this was on netflix or something like that um that would be perfectly fine um if i had to rate the happy time murders out of a one out of ten i would give it a 6.5 out of 10 yes a 6.5 out of 10 i bet you which is still positive i bet you thought i was gonna crap on it no i mean they have funny parts but it was still over the top and I just did not care about this characters or stories and, you know, just pretty much wanted it to be over. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen the Happy Time Murders or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And I'm providing links to all that good stuff down in the pinned comments. So if you want to help me grow, please subscribe to the channel. Share the video video and also follow me on social media but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for the happy time murders and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace